Hi everyone, it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I will show you how to crochet little egg baskets. These little baskets are perfect for springtime and fit a single egg or other treats inside. And for this project, you'll need three different colors of yarn. You'll need a color for, I used worsted weight acrylic for this project. You'll need one color for the main part of the basket, a smaller amount for the flower that is on the basket, and a 12 inch piece of yarn to sew this little button onto the basket. You also need a button. You'll need a five millimeter H crochet hook, a tapestry needle, and a pair of scissors. The basket is constructed in one piece, and then we just stitch the handle onto the back. Then we're gonna make the flower, which is an easy one round flower. And then we'll assemble it and sew the button on. So let's get started. The yarn I will be using for this project and for each of these baskets here is the Red Heart Super Saver. For this tutorial, I'm gonna be using the spring green. So to begin our basket, we're gonna make the main part of the basket first. So what we're gonna do is put a slip knot on our hook. To make a slip knot, wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your crochet hook, and bring up a loop. Then we're going to chain four. To make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, and four. In the chain farthest from the hook, we're going to work a slip stitch. Insert the hook into the chain, bring up a loop. Bring that loop through the loop that's already on your hook. We now have a ring, and you can open that up a little bit, that we're going to work our stitches into. I'm going to hold this tail along the edge, and that will weave it in as we go along as well. Okay, let's work round one. To begin round one, we're going to chain two, one, two. Then we're going to work 11 half double crochets into the center of the ring. To make a half double crochet, wrap yarn around hook, insert it into the center of the ring, bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through all three loops on your hook. That's how you work the half double crochet. If you've never worked the stitch, I also have a video on how to work the half double crochet if you need a little bit of um, practice before you begin. So we're gonna work 11 half double crochets into the center of the ring. So that was one, then two, then three, then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and 11. We're going to work a slip stitch into that starting chain to close our round. So round one is complete. Now at this point, we wove our end in as we went along. So what I like to do is get this little tail out of the way. So just pull to close that center hole and trim. And that way that tail will be out of your way. To work round two, we're going to chain two, one, two, and in the first stitch we'll work a half double crochet. And then in each stitch after that, we're going to work two half double crochets in each stitch. So one and two. Next stitch, one and two, next stitch, one and two. We're just gonna do this all the way around. So I'm gonna keep working two half double crochets in each stitch and we'll rejoin in just a moment. So I worked two half double crochets in each stitch and then I'm just going to join with a slip stitch to close the round. 
So it'll look something like this. This is going to be the bottom part of the basket. Okay, so let's move on to round three. To work round three, we're going to chain two, same as we did before. And then we're going to work one half double crochet in each stitch. Sometimes that first stitch is a little snug. So work a half double crochet in each stitch. All the way around. And this is gonna start to build the sides of our basket. Okay, so we're just gonna work a half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. And we'll go ahead and rejoin in just a moment. Okay, so I've reached the end of round three and I'm just doing the same thing. I'm just gonna join to close this round with a slip stitch, okay? So our basket is really shaping up. Next, for round four, we're just going to repeat the same round we just did. So we're just gonna chain two and then work a half double crochet in each stitch all the way around our basket. Okay, so a half double crochet in each stitch all the way around. So I'm gonna go ahead and work this round and again we'll rejoin towards the end of the round again. We're at the end of round four so we're just joining with a slip stitch again to close the round. So round four is complete so it's almost as high as our other basket. We have one round left. Round five is completed the same way as the previous round. So again, we're just gonna chain two, one, two, and then we're going to work a half double crochet in each stitch all the way around, the same way we've been doing before. Okay, so just work a half double crochet in each one of these stitches. And because this basket is so small, this project goes by very, very quickly and you can make lots and lots of these. You can even make a dozen if you have a dozen eggs, or you could fill them with jelly beans. So we're just gonna work a half double crochet all the way around, and we'll rejoin towards the end of this round as well. So we have arrived at the very last round, the very end of the very last round of the main part of the basket. So you can see it looks very similar to our other basket. Now it's time to work the handle. To make this handle part of our basket, we're going to chain 18. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen and 18. If you need your basket handle to be longer, just work more chains at this point. So if we look at our chain, in the second chain from the hook, this loop here does not count. So one, two, we're going to work a single crochet. Insert your hook into the chain, bring up a loop. Wrap yarn around hook and bring it through both loops. We're going to work a single crochet in each one of these chains all the way across our handle. Okay, so go ahead and just work a single crochet until you get to the bottom. Get some more yarn. Okay, so we're just working single crochets and this will get our basket's handle the width that we'd like it to be not too wide, not too narrow, nice and sturdy. And like I said, these baskets are cute to fit just a little single egg. You can put some jelly beans or other candy. You could put some coins in there. And again, we're just working 
a single crochet in each one of these chains all the way down to the base of our handle. Okay, now we've arrived at the bottom, so we're just going to go into one of these stitches at the bottom here and work a slip stitch, and that will attach the other side of our handle to the base of the basket. So it will look kind of like that, okay? So next, we're going to cut our yarn and fasten it off of our hook, okay? We can put our hook aside and grab our tapestry needle. And then this little end here, we're just going to weave that in. So flip your basket to the inside part and then just weave that yarn tail in. And then we're going to sew the other side of our handle to attach the handle. Okay, so you can just trim like that. Now turn the basket right side out. Next you're going to kind of straighten your handle out and go just directly across just like that. Okay so let's cut a little piece of the same color yarn and thread our tapestry needle just like that. Then we're going to turn our basket inside out. Bring your handle across directly across and then just kind of sandwich it like that. See how that looks? Now you're just going to run two or three stitches. We're not going to overdo it, but at the same time we want to get enough stitches in there to keep that handle on. Now this basket is teeny tiny and it's not going to hold a whole lot of stuff. We're not going to be putting, you know, 10 pounds in this basket. So, you know, it doesn't have to you know, you don't need 20 stitches, but I'm just going to do like three stitches across here. Okay. So then when you're done, you can take your tapestry needle out and then just take these two tails that you had and tie them together. Just like that. Get it nice and secure. Then take your tapestry needle again and just weave these two ends in. This is... There we go, it split a little. Just go ahead and weave that in. There we go, okay. So then just take your, again, our basket is still inside out, and we're just gonna take our tapestry needle and run it through. And then you can just snip that and then do the same for this other tail. Just take, thread your tapestry needle and then just run it in there as well. Okay, so now the main part of our basket, we can just trim that the same way we did. The main part of our basket is complete. So turn your basket right side out. Okay, you might need to shape it up a little bit. Get those sides nice and straight. Get that bottom nice and flat. Straighten everything out. So now our basket looks like our other baskets, but we're going to do this decorative flower that's on the front. Okay, so let's do that next. So we're gonna make the flower part next. And obviously you can use any color you like. This was the spring green, the shocking pink, and I believe this one is uh, lavender, or maybe this was, I th yeah, I think this is orchid and this is lavender. So we're gonna make a purple flower for our green basket. So to make the flower, it's just done in one round, it's super easy. We're going to just put a slip knot on our hook again and chain five this time. So one, two, three, four, and five. This is a great way to use up some scraps as well, if you have some scrap yarn laying around. In the chain farthest from the hook, we're going to work a slip stitch, same way we did with the basket, and that will create our ring. If you notice, I made the ring a tiny bit bigger because we're going to be 
squeezing a lot of stitches into the center of this ring. Okay, so our flower, if you notice, has five petals. Okay, so we're going to work for each petal, we're going to work three double crochets and a slip stitch. So one, two, and three. And then to give that petal its cinch in between, we're going to work a slip stitch, okay? That will create our first petal. If you've never worked a double crochet before, all you have to do is wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the center of the ring, bring up a loop. We're working on our second petal. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops on your hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops on your hook, the double crochet stitch, okay? So again, each petal is three double crochets and a slip stitch. So we just worked one, so we're gonna work our second double crochet and our third double crochet and then a slip stitch. Okay, petal two is complete. Let's work petal three by working three double crochets, one, two, and three, and a slip stitch to close that petal off. We have three petals now. We're gonna work for our fourth petal, three double crochets, one, two, and three. You can push this over like I'm doing if you're running out of space. We're fitting a lot of stitches into the center of the ring. Okay, we have four petals. Okay, and to do the very last petal, we're gonna work three double crochets and a slip stitch once again. So one, and to work the final petal, we'll just do three double crochets again. That's one, two, and to work this final petal, we're just gonna do the same thing. Three double crochets, that's one, two, and three and then a slip stitch to finish off this petal. And then we're also going to join with a slip stitch into this adjacent petal to close off the round, okay? I wanna point out that this little tail in the center, I held it along the edges I worked to weave in the end as we went along, okay? So we can go ahead and fasten off our flower. Just pull that end tight. Then we can move our yarn, grab our scissors, and then you can flip your flower over. The center tail that we did, pull it very, very tightly to close, and then you can just trim that tail. So it's going to look kind of like that. So what we want to do next is keep this tail intact. We're going to use it, we're gonna weave it in, but we're also gonna use this tail to sew onto our basket and get that attached, okay? So, my yarn is splitting a little. There we go, okay? So what we're gonna do is I like to just weave this in towards the center of the flower so it's not, that tail isn't on the edge anymore. Just pull that snug and that will kind of cinch that up. You can also, at this point, shape up your flower a little, get those petals nice and defined. So then what we're gonna do is take our basket and just kind of position the flower where you'd like it to go. And then, going into the green area with this tail, we didn't snip that yet. We're just gonna come from the back you might need to wiggle it a little bit to go through all these layers. 
We're just going to do a few stitches just to get this uh, flower attached. We're not sewing it a whole lot. We're just doing a couple, just kind of tacking it on with a couple of well-placed stitches. Okay, I'm just kind of going around the center here. Okay, and then you'll want to make sure, my tapestry needle popped off, but you'll want to make sure that your last stitch, the yarn, is in the back, the inside of the basket. So just run it through. There we go. See how that tails on the inside? Just leave it just like that. We're not going to cut it yet or weave it in. Okay, so it looks like our other baskets. Okay, so then what we're going to do is take your third color. If you notice, each one of my button centers has a different color and it looks very festive and springy. So I'm going to use yellow and I have a little pink button here and I'm just going to thread my tapestry needle once again with the yellow and then just position your button in the center and then just come up, depending on how many buttonholes you have. You might have a button like this or a shank button where a shank button is where the whole, uh, the loop is in the back. In that case, you don't really have to consider the color of the yarn because it won't be seen. But I have one with holes in the front, so I picked a third color of yarn for that. So I'm just going in all of these holes and I'm just leaving this intact right now. And then come back through the other holes or however many your button has. These are just inexpensive plastic buttons that I had. Okay. So our button is attached. This is a, just a purely decorative button. Then we're going to tie off the back and weave in the end. Okay, so once everything is exactly where you want it to be, then we're gonna turn our basket inside out again. We have all these tails. Now this is going to be the inside of the basket, so some of this will just get hidden. So I just tie a few knots with all these tails that you have left. And you can weave the ends in or just kind of trim them because this is the inside of the basket. It's not going to show, so it's up to you. I'm just going to I'm just going to trim mine a little bit. Okay, so then what you can do is just turn your basket right side out, shape everything up nice and neat, and your little basket is complete. So let me zoom out a little bit so we can see all of our baskets together. So we went very springy. Our baskets are very, very springy looking. Kind of hold them up like this. So that is how you crochet little egg baskets. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again!